leadership on what is appropriate there, but I, I would basically say that the garment in and of itself is just a plain garment. It's, it's really neither male nor female, but if you start getting into coloring, then you start getting male or female sometimes. I don't think men should be wearing like feminine colors and designs and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and ladies, I, I would be very careful on lending towards something that's very, very masculine. Uh, ladies have a much wider selection of colors to, to wear from, but there are styles with t-shirts. There are things that are printed on t-shirts that are inappropriate. And can I say this? I think this would be the overwhelming uh, caution that I would give, is t-shirts can be worn very, very tight. And then it is not modest. Uh, so so I, would, I would not put a t-shirt up and say this is unisex. Uh, when I'm talking about unisex, I'm talking about men wearing uh, pants that are cut in a very feminine way. I, I don't even know how. I'm not a designer. I'm not a clothing designer. I know when I see it that I think, that looks like it, that doesn't look like a man's. I, 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 there's, and I think we, we all realize that there's a style that, that we see in the music industry uh, we see in, in many film stars and we see uh, out, of, out of Hollywood, there's a style that is, is bent on blending the sexes. Now, I don't think a normal t-shirt is, is, is that garment, but I do see some pants on men that I think, where did they get those? Uh, because it looks to me to be metrosexual. It, it looks to me to be unisex, to be a blending of the sexes. And I, so I would say with t-shirts, uh, coloration, design, pattern. Um, I, I don't like, uh, I, let me just be very plain. I, I consider it immodest if somebody's wearing a t-shirt that is torn and exposes parts of the torso. Like, I mean, that's not covering you. That's exposing little pieces that draw the attention of people to you. Same with uh, pants on the guys. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't like seeing apostolic young men with pants that have big holes all down through here. I'm thinking, what are you trying to prove? Even if they've got something on under it, I'm thinking, what are you, what are you, trying, to, what are you trying to draw attention to? Right. You know. So I, I think it's really important, and, and I'm not going to stand up and say, okay, here's my policy book for every garment. Uh, you know, I've seen some diet books that they go through every food that you can get at any restaurant and give you all the calories. Well, I am not going to do that with clothing. There's just way too much. You know, this one's modest, this one's not, this one blah, blah, blah. But I'm just saying those principles should guide us. And so I, I would say that, again, you approach any garment with does this please, not does this please me or does this fit in with society or even is this in style? There's nothing wrong with being in style if the style can be made modest. But we don't approach garments as Christians primarily with is this in style or does this look a certain way? We approach garments with number one, is this pleasing to God? Like we do everything else in life. This is who we are and we're proud to be that. And so if this pleases God, if it fits within my gender, if it affirms my gender, I don't think a t-shirt necessarily affirms or denies male or female gender until you get into coloring, patterns, all of that kind of stuff. Then you can, you know, you can pretty much quickly tell that's a girl's t-shirt. <laughs> there are some that you won't catch me anywhere near. All right. Makes sense. Anything else? Very good questions. Okay. Oh, a blazer like? Yeah, I I don't have any. Oh, okay, like a, a suit coat, you mean? Okay. Uh, basically, to me, uh, those again are an outer garment. If you remember from uh, what we talked about today, there is the the tunic, which is the basic garment, and then anything else that was added to it. Uh, was kind of optional. Sometimes they wore it, sometimes they did not. So what I would say about those things is uh, two things. In the style, it should affirm the gender. A man's coat should look masculine. Uh, that's a little subjective, I understand, but it should look masculine. That would be in coloring and in design. A woman's coat should uh, look feminine in coloring, in design. Um, now, when you get to a coat, if it's, it's, a, if it's a modest coat, um, really, 
Color is going to be one of the major issues there because a coat should be, if it's designed modestly, it shouldn't be very tight. Uh, it shouldn't accentuate certain parts of the body. Um, so really, a coat is a coat. If a man puts it on, as long as it's not some feminine color that kind of you know, looks like a, a woman's color, uh, then I, I would have no problem with, with any coat he would choose to wear. Uh, with a woman, any overcoat or, or, or blazer or whatever that she chooses to wear, I don't necessarily have a problem with that because, again, it's still modest. It doesn't detract from her femininity. Uh, so, again, I would grant quite a bit of liberty there. Um, now, having said that, I am not part of this particular culture. Uh, so, in Canada, what is style may vary from what is style here. And so there are many issues, and we will talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but there are many issues where we have, that's why we have three holiness teachers. We have the Bible, and what I've given you today is the principles from the Bible. So those are non-negotiable. Then we have our spiritual leadership. And why is spiritual leadership given to us? It is given to us so that when we're not sure about a modern style or a modern issue, we ask our spiritual leadership, what are you feeling? What are you? And that is why, if you cannot submit to your spiritual leadership, you need to go find some spiritual leadership you can submit to. B because uh, spiritual leadership is important. And, and so our spiritual leadership is given to us for that precise reason. I have a question, and I can't find it in a direct command of the Word of God. What do I do? That is where spiritual leadership becomes important. And then we have a third holiness teacher. And this one becomes important. And the Holy Spirit will lead you if you will be faithful to pray. We say, Lord God, does this please you? And God will let you know. He will make you. If, let me just say it this way. If you are uncomfortable in a garment and you're thinking, I hope Pastor Tim, not you, sister. Uh, so, somebody in the church is thinking, I hope Pastor Tim doesn't notice that I have this on. If that ever crosses your mind, that is not an appropriate garment for you to be wearing. The Holy Spirit's making you uneasy with that garment. So don't wear that. Throw it out. Burn it. Give it away. Well, don't give it away. Somebody else will wear it. Throw it out. Um, but, but basically, that, that's, what's, that's what's going on. The Holy Spirit is saying, mm, no. And so those three holiness teachers need to agree. The Word, our spiritual leadership, and what the Spirit is prompting you. And Pastor Tim, that comes back to your question. Somebody says, well, the Holy Spirit doesn't give me that conviction. If the Holy Spirit, so-called in them, doesn't give them that proper conviction, and the Word of God says it, and their spiritual leadership says it, and they say, oh, well, the Spirit doesn't convict me about that. Something's out of line with their three holy, holiness teachers. Those three holiness teachers must always agree. You're the Spirit of God within you, your spiritual leadership, and the Word of God. Amen? Amen. I think we're done for today. Thank you. Great questions, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow.